Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. In this episode, we're going to continue working with the selection tool. And this time working on the marquee section tool. So being able to drag your mouse across the screen to select multiple units. So first thing we're doing here is we're going to go into our RTS controller. And we need to set up a function to clear our unit selection. So we're going to go make a new function and call it clear unit selection. And what we're going to do for this is we're going to take our unit selection array, get, and then do a for each loop. Because we need to tell each one to deselect essentially. So take it from the array element and search for selected, and you'll see is selected, which is the function we made in the previous episode. We'll put that into the loop body and leave is selected as false, meaning it will deselect it. Once it's gone through this whole array and deselecting each one, when it's completed, we need to clear that array. Remember, this array is references, so we need to clear those references from that list. So you just drag out your array again, choose get, and then search for the clear function. And that'll clear it empty of all its units. So that's the function. The next thing to do is go onto our HUD where we do the marquee selection tool. So go to your RTS HUD canvas. And in here, we've got our simple drawing of our square when we're dragging a mouse across the screen, which we've done in previous episodes. So the task now is transforming this into a selection tool. Now, there is a very powerful node that we can be using, a function here. And if you just search for selection, you'll see get actors in selection rectangle. Now, this very powerful node will get us, uh, based on two points, all the class, all the references of actors within that range. So it's very quite useful for this particular method. So what we're going to do in here is we need to store these out actors whilst we're drawing it. At the moment, this is only happening when we're drawing, and we've already got those two points there, point A and point B. We're going to use those in our rectangle drawing here, and we're going to filter the class selection to a unit base. That way, only units that can be selected will be selected. And if you want to turn on non-colliding components, you can do. I leave that on, I think, in this case. And also, this is up to you as well. If you want the act to be uh, to be fully enclosed, so does it have to be fully inside the square in order to be uh, selected? I'm going to leave that off in my case, but feel free to turn it on if you wish. So next thing we've got to do is take this out actors here and store this as a reference. So I'm going to take this out and promote to variable and this would be a selection of actors and this is something that's happening all the time whilst you're drawing that square on the screen keeping that reference list there when we let go of the mouse this is no longer going to be running but our references are still stored which means that if we go over to our event stop selection we're going to take this selection of actors and we're going to do and add these to our controller. So what I'm going to do here is on begin play in this blueprint is I'm going to get hold of the player controller and I'm going to cast to it here. So I've got a more accurate uh, reference to it. I cast to the RTS controller and I'm going to promote that to a variable here. So now on our event stop selection, I can drag my eyes RTS controller out yet, and I need to clear the selection that I currently have. So drag from here and do clear selection. This is the function we just made at the start of this video. And so that will clear what we've currently got. And then we need to set up the new ones. And we're going to take the selection of actors that we get from our drawing and take this and do a for each loop. So, as you can see from this array element on the for each loop, it's an actor object reference. We need it to be a unit based reference. So, this will involve casting because casting will transform this actor ob object reference to a more specific unit based actor reference. So, I'm going to drag from here and do cast to unit base. Now, I can really foresee some questions coming through in the comments saying, why don't you just use like an interface to handle this? You could totally do that, that, that viable way of doing it. Um, but you may be doing it because you're thinking that may be more uh, cost effective or or, or less uh, less performant. 
you're not going to see much difference. They are. It's still the the interface is still going to have to cast a value over to see if it is going to be matching the interface. So you're not going to get much difference. So you you can see we're just a cast if you want in this case. It's totally just fine as it's more applicable to what we're actually using this for. We're transforming a reference here to its child format. So once we've got that, we're going to take out our RTS controller and we're going to do add unit to selection. And that's going to take this as unit base and plug that in. And there you have it. So we'll hit compile and save. And let's go and test this in our game. So over here, I've got some actors. If I drag over, it'll select all the ones I have there. If I don't drag over anything, it'll deselect them. If I only do these two, let's select those two, those two, that one. There you go. So at the moment, it's always calling this start and stop of this drawing the marquee. But we don't want that to happen because we still want to be able to click individual uh, units in our scene uh, by just left clicking on the actual unit. This, if we lift it as it is, may select the unit, it may not. It depends on what runs first. So what we're going to do is make sure that this only happens when we are drawing a marquee. So for that, we need a boolean. So go to your variables and do is marquee. And on the receive draw HUD, after we did a draw rect, drag out your is marquee and choose set that to true and plug that in. We're then going to do a check up here for the stop selection. We'll do a little branch in there. And the branch is going to check if we are in fact doing the marquee. True, we'll do all this stuff and then it's completed uh, for each loop. We'll tell the is marquee to be false. That way it turns it off. So now we'll only do this code if we're drawing a marquee. But at the moment, we're always drawing a marquee, no matter what we do. So what we need to do is determine when we want to start drawing the marquee. And that's going to be based on, on the, uh, the mouse movement. So how far is the mouse moved? If it's moved a certain distance, start doing a marquee and do a marquee selection. Otherwise, ignore it and just do a single click selection. So for that, we're going to go down to our draw HUD here. And I'm just going to move this along here and move along the point B calculation as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to take point A and point B variables and take them away from each other. So do minus vector 2D minus vector 2D. And it will get you the difference. We're then going to look at the length of this vector 2D. And that gives us how far away the mouse has moved. We're then going to check if that is greater than a certain value. And we'll start off with uh, 200. And that will end up in a branch. Plugged in after we've done the set point B and before we do the rect. So we only want to do this if this is greater than 200 in distance. That will turn on the marquee selection. Then the marquee selection will go through the stop selection here and deselect everything that we have going on. So now we get a much cleaner appearance in our selection tool. So now if I click and drag, you'll notice no marquee gets drawn until I go to a certain distance and then it will add the marquee in. And then you can do the marquee selection. But I still also have the ability to add individual units to selection. Now one thing we can do in here as well is we'll make it so when we select units and if we click off somewhere in a distance we want to deselect them so for that we need to set up a new trace channel so go to edit product settings and in here we're going to add a new trace channel so type in trace and go to trace channels new trace channel and here we're going to choose a uh, new trace channel that's going to be based on anything that we can click on so we'll call this one interactable. And if I do default response of ignore, I click accept. Okay, next we're going to close that. And we're going to go into my unit base. And in here, we're going to click on the capsule component and change 
its collision preset for traces in interactable to be blocked. So you changed it from pawn to custom. And you can change interactable here now to be blocked. So now it will block interactable traces. Compile and save. Close this. Then we're going to go into our uh, mouse in our RTS controller. So in RTS controller, you'll find on the right hand side mouse cursor, and you'll find the default trace channel camera. Change that to your interactable one. So now, when you click the mouse, it's searching that trace channel for interactables. So that should still allow us to click on individual units because they're the only ones that have interactable traces. Like so. So what we're going to do now is when we do a left click, we're going to check if there's any interactable underneath it. If there isn't, then we can clear whatever we've got selected. So let's go to the controller. On the left mouse button, so after start select, we're going to search for the mouse under, or maybe it's under mouse, sorry. Under mouse, there you go. Get hit result under cursor, that's the one you wanted cursor by channel so hit result under cursor by channel then the trace channel you know change that to interactable and we'll leave trace complex on and with the return value we're going to put that into a branch so that will say hey is there anything under the mouse that is interactable if there isn't if it's false then i'm going to clear my unit selection by using my clear unit selection function File and save. Now, if I go and push play and select some units and then click somewhere else over, over here, it'll clear my selection. Similarly, if I click on individual unit and then click off, that'll disappear. And there you have it a simple unit selection system. And we've now got those units set into an array. So now we can do stuff with that array by making a move. So in the next episode, we're going to do a selection tool. That will then, when we right click on a location, they'll make a move to that location. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where a donation of just $1 a month will get access to that video plus many, many others months before they appear on YouTube. Big shout out and thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. It really is amazing. I can't thank you enough. If you're watching this and you've yet to subscribe to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. And may, uh, you'll catch in all the videos I release every single week, including two live streams I do weekly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.